We're being welcomed by Jean-Pierre Varnier, a university professor from Paris. We're here to make a film about the golden jubilee of the accession to the throne of the Fon, or King of Mang Con. It's a collaborative project by the universities of Paris and Vienna. For the anthropologist, it's his Fon, in a manner of speaking, because he's been researching the traditions of this kingdom, or fondom, for 40 years. The phone has already been preparing dances. Are you not seeing the really phone all around the market? It's a unique opportunity to witness the Golden Jubilee celebrations of a sacred king. <laughs> we naturally have a bespoke item of clothing with his image on it made for us. The choice of cut is completely up to the individual, but loyalty to the Fon is a sacred duty. We're accompanying Jean-Pierre to the place of his research. At court, in recognition of his services to the kingdom, our friend and colleague has the honorary title saint which means voice of the courtyard. and that's a kingdom in the highlands of Western Cameroon. It's one amongst perhaps 150 kingdoms. The Fon of Mancon has had a new triumphal arch erected to distinguish himself from the mass. He insists on overseeing the final preparations himself. After all, his power and prestige are at stake at the celebrations. At the time when the states are under a lot of criticism and are seen as corrupt and inefficient, so the king are really taking advantage of that situation and this is why also the king attracts so much, so many NGOs, so many progr foreign programs and so on. So uh, I think they are now looming large in the political landscape in Cameroon. Fon Angwafo is also influential at the centre of power. As vice president of the governing party, he often commutes back and forth between Mancon and Cameroon's capital, Yaoundé. Formally, Cameroon has a multi-party system, but real democracy is something else. The autocratic president allows few people into the circle of power. The king from the Anglophone region is one of them, regardless of any clashes of interest. Since taking the throne half a century ago, he has been fighting for the unity of what were once the British and French parts of Cameroon. This commitment has secured him a place at the side of long-standing president Paul Bia. When the cap fits, let him wear it. When his father died, the then 34-year-old didn't expect that he would receive the burden of becoming king along with the leopard skin. I was embarrassed. 
when it became clear that I was the chosen successor. And the way I was more or less arrested and thrown without seeking my opinion made me very uncomfortable. In his autobiography, the Fon wrote, I wore a white loincloth and carried a bamboo stick, which stands for the unity of Mancon and the Royal Leopard. At that time, half a century ago, his life as a normal human being was over. Since then, his subjects have seen him as the connection between the past, present and future. The Fon set off to Ala Anki with the insignia of spiritual and temporal authority. There, at the former seat of the kingdom, the days of celebrations for the Golden Jubilee will begin. When the king places his feet on the tusk, he takes on the guise of an elephant. Only now can he have the palm wine, the favourite drink of the elephants, shared out. Serving palm wine with his buffalo horn is a privilege only a chosen few are entitled to. The buffalo is thought to be one of the powerful animals which the fawn can turn into to care for his subjects. Then the Fon has to perform sacred acts that are laden with strict taboos. The Fon will walk towards the royal graveyard where all the Fons are buried and you will make offerings to them. The newly built huts protect the graves from the stairs of strangers. We awaken the ancestors. We awaken the ancestors by the, they go inside and they say prayer and all that and so on over each one of them. And then the phone now goes down to the stream because before he offers the, uh, the whole sacrifice, he has to be cleansed. Uh, he's rebaptized. We say his baptismal priest went with him there. What they do, some of us, even though <laughs> I don't even go, none of us goes there except his two baptismal priests go with him down the river. Not even the notables of the kingdom find out what exactly happens during the ritual cleansing in the river. The elephant was the most powerful animal around this area and it symbolized the biggest animal is the fawn. The most powerful animal is the fawn. It gives the impression that the fawn is still taking his bath in that spring. And in so doing, the fawn is invigorated. And if he had made any mistakes, he is washed of his errors in that water. And is strengthened to continue his mission of ruling the people.
The fond derives renewed strength from the secret and well-guarded meeting with his ancestors. The dead fonds are considered the source of all life, and the present fond is their steward. Now he is handing out baskets of food, which are symbolic of the essence of life. It takes some deliberation to determine who gets what, because the kind and quantity of food expresses the social standing of the families within the community. Our colleague is also given a well-filled basket, but we too receive a royal gift, whatever it may signify. For newcomers, it's a moment of uncertainty. How are we to know the proper etiquette in our dealings with this sacred kingship? You wash your hands too. Yes, that's that's Oh, No, me wash your Jean-Pierre has been to many such events and is also very familiar with the local dish achu. Our motto is, a shared achu is half an achu. New beginnings are always tough, but the actual message of the communal meal is that we've been received into the circle of members of Mancon, even though the royal gift is still attempting to escape. A sip of sacred raffia wine for the cameraman, and then it's time to leave. The rhythmic sounds from the elephant tusks are considered the voice of a king who can communicate with ancestors no less than with the living. They accompany the king on all important occasions. At the Fon's departure from Ala Anki, the land of water, the women sing songs of praise for their spiritual shining leader. The comparison gives them certainty. Our chicken and their chicken are siblings, just like blacks and whites, they say. Was that the point of this gift? In the Calabashes, the sacred river water from the old seat of the kingdom is carried to the present-day palace. It connects the 20th Fon of Mancon with all of his predecessors. The roots of the current kingdom of Mankong go back several centuries, but warriors with motorbikes are as much part of modern Cameroon as the Fon's son, a forester with a PhD. The saying goes that 
Cameroon is Africa in miniature. Cameroon is so rich in that we have a little of everything. A hundred years ago, the forests of Mankong were still full of wildlife. Today, lions, elephants and leopards only live in the far north. Illegal logging is the norm in large parts of Cameroon. Entire shiploads of tropical hardwood leave the port of Douala bound for Europe. Europe, on the other hand, ships old cars to Africa, which has a further negative impact on the environment. Plant and animal diversity are under pressure. Cities like Douala are very resource hungry. One highly sought after resource is construction sand that laborers bring up from the bottom of the river. I'm feeling blue cause I'm missing you girl Baby, 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 my baby I'm missing you girl Even the once idyllic fishing village of Limbe is at risk of many a misfortune from its nearby horizon. And it's not just the offshore oil platforms that are the problem. The fishing fleets from China and other countries are taking almost all the fish in the ocean. Limbe lies on the slopes of a volcano, but the real explosive power in Cameroon comes from the social differences. The multi-ethnic country has almost 300 different linguistic communities and is often called a melting pot. But real togetherness is only achieved when it comes to football. Fishing boats are stranded in Limbe, the rural migrants in Douala, the people here say. Their dream of a better future often ends on the streets of this commercial city with its three million inhabitants. Only the more fortunate ones manage to work as drivers of motorbike taxis, but every job has its pitfalls. Might is right when coping with the city traffic. A growing population and rural migration make the nights busy and the buses full. Stress and chaotic traffic has spread to the Western Highlands, which include the Kingdom of Mancon. In 1971, 
Uh, it was my first experience in Africa and in Cameroon. Uh, it was quite a different country from what it is today. This part of the country was quite isolated. At the time it was considered as quite backwards and a kind of uh, conservatory of uh, strange and antique traditions. Many of these traditions have survived until the present day. Only the attitudes have changed. Today, such performances are part of the national cultural heritage. Culture here is dynamic and can take on new forms. A duster from the supermarket can replace the old fly whisk made of animal hair, for example. African traditions aren't static or timeless, on the contrary. With their digital cameras, the daughters and sons of the Fon capture the historic moment. Their father is just as confident on his leopard skin as he is on the slippery terrain of national and international politics. Many of his children live in Washington or New York. They don't have much of an understanding of their father's long journey since the start of his reign. Half a century ago, the Mabu, a kind of forest spirit, eventually did good work. It's still their duty, together with those knowledgeable in medicine, to prevent all evil forces from gaining access to the palace. Their whistling expresses that they're not human, they're real bush creatures. By scaring off all potential enemies, they're clearing the path for the king. He wants to assure himself personally of the quality of the dance troops that have come from near and far. The unofficial competition among the dancers is guaranteed to produce creativity. The different communities have exchanged ideas for a long time. Many have copied each other's styles and masks, reinterpreting them and sometimes even improving them.
central point in the region. It is now mixed up with citizens from most tribal areas, even from with foreign people here. So we have to look towards development. The up and coming town of Bamanda can be reached in just a few minutes by motorbike taxi. Many of the kingdom's approximately 60,000 inhabitants commute to the provincial capital every day to go to school, to sell their products at the market, and to purchase consumer goods. Amenda is also a stronghold of the country's largest opposition party. There are frequent tensions with the central power in Yaoundé. The king, who has good connections with the government, holds a key role in maintaining political stability. One hand washes the other, and that's particularly true in Cameroon. Not all kings consider the government's politics to be clean, but many get access to money and influential posts by collaborating. The Sultanate of Bamun, several hours' drive from Bamenda, is an example. The Sultan held several ministerial jobs at once. In return, he brings in votes. Every Friday, the monarch goes to the mosque to pray. Under his famous grandfather, the entire court converted to Islam. He thereby paid tribute to his subjects of the Fulani people. They helped him put down a palace rebellion. Despite converting to Islam, the then ruler in Formban showed himself to be tolerant towards other religions. After the Friday prayer, a solemn procession accompanies the Sultan back to the palace built by his grandfather. During the procession, the cultural influences of the Fulani dominate in clothes, music and the riding display. When Sultan Noya finally holds his court, the history of his country comes together into an eventful mosaic. The spectacle reflects the policy of alliance as well as the quarrels and wars. Rivalries and bloody power struggles shape the relations between the kingdoms before and during the colonial era. The prayers for peace weren't always heard.
At the time, the fortified palace in Fumban fulfilled a similar function to the sacred forest in the kingdom of Mankon. The forest was an area for defense, and if another village comes into war with us, uh, you could defeat Mankon, but it is not, you cannot get the king. So it, it, it was a place where the fawn can be hidden and for the last resort, the last defense area. We were driven from other places through other tribes. This must be remembered. And if we have to avoid the hard sense of war, we should know what it used to be. Today's warriors may use modern means of communication, but they still can't make do without the ritual protection from sacred plants. As they set off to have their weapons blessed, their leader has no inkling of the imminent problems. Whenever the double bell is rung, it's a serious matter. Its sound instills awe and respect. Via the loudspeaker, the king's authority can be heard as the warriors leave through the triumphal arch. At the moment, their leader is still in good spirits. a mobile phone and a war drum. New and old information technologies are evidently mutually compatible. But then immediately after the secret cleansing in the river, the misfortune happens. Foul for the ceremony, as uh, the man holding it is and is escaped, so they are chasing and to get the foul. Has that ever happened? No, 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 no. We have never experienced that. This is for the first time. <laughs> it won't do much for the general's honour, but the cockerel is faring even worse. The exotic appearance is deceptive. Many of the royal warriors are respected businessmen who wear suits and ties to their offices in their regular jobs. The king is already waiting on the ceremonial plaza in front of the palace. He's not looking too disgruntled, given the contretemps. He may be thinking that this wouldn't have happened during his coronation. The Fon's son is not letting the fuss spoil his mood anyway. But then things get serious, particularly for the cockerel. His blood is meant to give the weapons strength and protect their owners in battle. Okay. 
After the double bells and the war drum, the weapons are blessed. The leader of the warriors is cursing all the former enemies and casting death threats on all future opponents, all in the name of the king. At the same time, he welcomes all friends of Mankon. Finally, he hands the king the spears of his predecessors. The king chooses the spear of a famous fawn in whose name he praises the strength of his kingdom. <laughs> The warriors have confirmed, together with the Fon, that they will defend Mankon like leopards. In this, they are supported by the Queen Mother. I am the Maofo of Mankon. The Fon stays in the palace. He is the head of the country, and the Maofo is the leader of all the women of Mankon. I assist the Fon with the women and the children of the palace. My main occupation is administration. When I get up, I call all the women of the palace and plan with them. I tell them the work to be done. Here too, it's predominantly the women who are responsible for their family's basic supplies. In Mankon's rural areas, the people largely live off farming. Like elsewhere in Africa, this job is mainly done by women. Maybe that's why it was one of the king's key concerns to broaden the economic basis and take some of the load off the women. Trained in agriculture, he introduced commercial animal husbandry, thereby securing a sharp increase in incomes. He won over the neighboring Fulani to cattle farming. That was the beginning of a rare success story about how cattle farmers and crop growers can work together peacefully.
the Fon doesn't see a contradiction between progress and an awareness of traditions. During my 50 years, we have tried to eliminate obnoxious traditions. And so I think our culture, our tradition, our customs can compete favorably with other good modern customs in the world which is a global village. They've all come for the Fon's Golden Jubilee, the Fulani from the surrounding area, the delegates of the Sultan of Bamoon, state representatives and kings from near and far. They're honouring a fawn who is presenting himself as the most powerful animal for this occasion. His elephant hair headdress and the tusk say it all. He's the one in charge on this political rostrum. The political VIPs are anxiously being awaited the governor of the northwest region arrives in a convoy. He shows his awareness of traditions by wearing a Fulani kaftan. The elephant trumpeting initiates the national anthem that everyone sings together. Cameroon's national cohesion does not seem all that seamless either. The social peace remains fragile. That's a fact the warrior's appearance seems to emphasize. Even the Fulani's riding skills refer back to campaigns of conquest. A melting pot or a powder keg. With so many different interests, even the powerful army thinks it's best to take a step back. Authority, power and influence are the real ingredients of the celebratory cake. You see, it's not just the 50 years of the fun being on the throne, but there are 50 years of greater, greater achievements for the Mankon people. It's 50 years of achievement for the Mankon people, not just for the fun. That is why you actually saw that the population was out jubilating. For the fun of Mankon, cutting the cake may represent a real caesura. Has he been able to improve the supply situation and the prosperity of his kingdom? At least on this day of celebration, everyone will have enough to eat, though the cake alone won't do it.
The warriors are strengthening themselves with palm wine before the big performance, while the women are enjoying the Mankon's national dish, achu. They are all wearing ceremonial clothes with the likeness of the king, and so are we. We're being looked after by the Queen Mother. At this point, we had no inkling yet that this was almost to be our last supper. During the subsequent rifle parade, the warriors use live ammunition. There's almost no escape. There's one crucial question that may not be worrying just us. How much palm wine have they had to drink? The masked dancers are evidently trusting yesterday's ritual blessing of their weapons. Historic footage proves that the celebration of the Fon's coronation 50 years ago was just as deafening. The times are changing, and we are changing with them. That could be the motto of these celebrations. The motto fits in with the King's most important principle. Don't show fear of change when the wheel of time keeps turning. In Mankon, it's been a long time since the men were the only ones who had a say. Today, the women are participating on all levels of social and political life. It's well known that this was not so at the start of the Fon's reign. At first, the women were regarded to be of a lower class to the men. Women were never involved in public uh, manifestations and their opinions were disregarded. But I think it's different today. Women are already taking a part. So over the 50 years, things have been different. These are actually the golden days of the Mark on Fondon and uh, beyond. People have come from far and wide to join us in the celebration of the golden days of the Mark on Fondo. Ultimately, what goes for the sacred kingdom goes for the country's politicians too. The quality of the government and the support of the people determine the success or failure of those in power.
Towards the end of the day, the celebrations reach a climax. One of the most uh, striking peculiarities that one experienced when uh, the king uh, sprayed the content of his mouth full of raffia wine, and that exemplifies what the king is all about. He's someone who's uh, imbued with a lot of life substances and he, he sprays it all over the place. Like an elephant with water, the Fon sprays palm wine from his mouth. The Fon is seen as a calabash whose store of life-giving palm wine is unending. It is believed to be the blood flowing through the veins of the kingdom. As in many African countries, the sacred kings of Cameroon are reaching a new level of power. Are the golden days of the kingdom still ahead of them? His star, in any case, seems a long way from setting. Mama, mama, na wai. 